You know, Jan, one of the greatest things about what we do at the Rusty and Jan show is we get to hear some really excellent musicians. Yes, our time with Ted Jordan was insightful, thoughtful, and entertaining. His style and his technique are just amazing. And he's a valued clinician as a music therapist of many years. Yes, that goes perfectly with our theme this week, music as medicine. We'll also tell you about the happenings in our music community. And of course, we'll hear from George about what's going on at Malalani. So if you're ready, let's get started with The, the Rusty and Jan Show. When the world comes crashing down on us, they're always there, they're always there, and they're always happy company. Because they care, oh yes, they care, and when you need to take out pain, well, no one else will be. Gotta go, I'm go on Zoom. Thank God there are friends like you. I said, thank God there are friends like you. Our song of the week is by Charles Nolan. Mm -hmm. It's called Since I'm No Longer Speaking to Myself. It's hilarious. It's very good. Since I'm no longer speaking to myself, we're getting along much better. Nothing worth a way at a relationship like spending too much time together. Since I'm no longer speaking to myself, I have a better sense of time and place. Amazing how much work I'm getting done without that bastard in my face. I finally found the guts to speak up after all the times he'd held me down. Told that no good son of a bitch to get his interfering ass out of town. At times I admit I miss him. I wonder if he feels the same. But since I'm no longer speaking to myself, I got nobody else to blame but me. Nobody else to blame. And since I'm no longer speaking to myself, who am I telling this to anyway? <laughs> I got that bastard out of my life. Oh, Damn. Man, the king of the short song. <laughs> Chain around my neck. Most of the trouble I ever got into was all his fault. And now it's time for Going Out with Rusty and Jen. Welcome to Going Out with Rusty and Jen. We have an exciting lineup of guests for the upcoming weeks on the Rusty and Jan show. June 14th will feature one of the most devoted Melaniites, Richard Hunt. And then on June the 21st, we'll hear from Marion Halliday. And on June 28th, we will talk to Kathy Quinn. Yes. Seems like venues are opening everywhere as more people are becoming vaccinated. Melalani Cafe is continuing to have outdoor performances Saturday, June 12th from 2 to 5 will feature the Juggernaut String Band. And then on Sunday, Flute 66. Did you ever hear of them before? Never. Flute 66. Oh, isn't that Rusty and Jan with uh, Lance Fingles and Chuck Darrow? And? And uh, Andrew, I forget his last name though. Yes. Andrew, I forget his last name, <laughs> new drummer. Yes. So we're very excited about this. Are we not, Jan? We are very excited about it. Yes. So they'll be on stage from one to four, or we'll be on stage from one to four. As always, make sure you go out and support these performers and have some of George's delicious food. Please contact Jan if you are interested in scheduling something. We are finally starting to get the hang of our hybrid virtual open mic. Uh, it's going to continue to take place outdoors in the garden at the plant shop next to the Melani every Thursday from 6 to 9.30. And from now, for now, we'll continue online signups every Wednesday at 5 on the Melani Open Micers Group page. Facebook, right? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. As previously mentioned, a number of festivals are planned for this season. Falcon Ridge Folk Festival will have a one-day outdoor hybrid event on July 31st in Goshen, Connecticut. More details to come as we receive them. And we got some final details about the Philadelphia Folk Festival. It will be a hybrid event and will take place on August 21st and 22nd. 
It will feature live concerts at the Spring Mountain Ski Area with a maximum of 1,000 audience members. There will be no in-person camping, but will instead offer a virtual campsite like they did last year. We, we had a campsite. We had a great campsite. We had lots of fun. Um, they are calling it 59 and a half annual Philadelphia Folk Festival, a 2021 pocket size edition. For more, for, for more details, visit p, uh, www.pfs.org. X-Fest will take place in person at the Country Creek Winery on September 17th and 18th. Yes, and we're planning an event for this fall to film scenes for the completion of the video for my song, Pops Train. This will tentatively take place on September 25th, and we're envisioning a picnic-style event to include jamming and other family-friendly activities. I really hope you'll join us and possibly take part in some of the filming. You know, dress like in period dress. That would be really cool. I would really like that. So Pops Train is going to be a special event, and uh, um, we, uh, as we get more details, we'll spread them around. Yeah. PFS Fall Fling will happen in person on October 1st through the 3rd with limited attendance in Green Lane, Pennsylvania. Now it's time what? to see what George is cooking up at Melani Cafe this week. What is he cooking? I don't know. Let's find out. It's time for George's, George's Corner. Corner. Hey everybody, welcome to George's Corner. It was a hot one this weekend, but we had three really nice shows. We had uh, Michael London on Friday night, and that went awesome. And then we had Beth Mead and her gang on Saturday, and we had Barry Dwyer on Sunday. So we had three days of really nice music, and we have music on Saturday and Sunday again this week coming up. And we have an open mic uh, starting uh, on, on Thursday from 6.30 to 9.30. So check us out and check us out on Facebook. And now it's time for Head to Head with Rusty and Jan. As many of you may recall, we previously had a very interesting guest, Michael Andrew Cavanaugh in March and we briefly discussed music therapy. Many of you may have seen the reaction when headphones with R&B music was placed on a catatonic patient's ears, and he suddenly seemed to awake and respond positively to the music. I think, unfortunately, we don't see more of this because overworked staff doesn't have time for individualized therapy for patients, but has to opt for group activities so that they can have something for all patients. One-on-one -on -one is rarely seen. Yeah. It was much worse when I began my nursing career many, many years ago. Many, many. Many, many, many. Music therapists were not part of the treatment team. Insurance companies wouldn't pay for it, and many seniors had no choice but to vegetate in place. Gradually, the laws changed, stating that to be Medicare-certified programs, to, you were required to provide intellectual and emotional stimulation. They were mandated. I'm proud to say that I've been providing music in all the facilities I've worked in since I first became a nurse. I find it fascinating 
to see what some activity directors accomplish on very meager budgets. I had my introduction to this audience when my mother was in a facility. She spoke with her activities director and got us scheduled there on a regular basis, and then a new career for Rusty and I was born. I would encourage my fellow baby boomers to consider this demographic, as you may have more in common than you think. Yep. We play Beatles music for them now, along with our Cole Porter and other standards. They love it. There was a time uh, I was focused on getting paid for my gigs. I guess we go through that. And, uh, and I grew to understand that what I really wanted was just to be recognized for what I did and appreciated for what I did. I have never been able to experience th that better than when I'm among seniors. I personally enjoy the challenge of creating a program for every level of cognition. There are different stages as patients decline and we like to meet the needs of people in all of those stages. An example of one of my favorite music therapists is our guest for this evening, the great Ted Jordan. This is how our interview with him went. Uh, first time I met this guy was uh, about 20 years ago, probably a little bit more. I remember seeing him uh, playing guitar on a porch at uh, Spring Thing uh, from Philadelphia Folk Song Society. And uh, and I just, uh, I'd been playing for a long, long time, and I just thought, uh, if I could only play like this guy. He's probably one of the best fingerstyle guitarists uh, in the area, and uh, we're so honored to have Ted Jordan. Hi, Ted. Hi. So how are you doing today, Ted? Good. Wish a little bit more sunshine, but then uh, yeah. one can wish for sunshine and not get it and still live. Well, That's right. True. <laughs> It's almost like the year's running late, which is ironic because it feels like the year's running late for me, too, like I'm playing catch up all the time. Yeah. You know what? I feel like we all are. <laughs> it's a yeah. It is. It's true. Oh, God. Yeah, I've talked to other people who've said the same thing, that they're really, really hustling, trying to keep up. Oh, and, and the other thing is uh, what we've found is like a, we, we've been able to go out and play with people. We have a practice with our band today. And... Uh, so all of a sudden, I like those guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it's just so good to be getting out and doing anything with people again. It's oh, oh yeah, it's I know. Really, it's overwhelming. People that norm that used to drive us crazy were just so grateful for everybody oh, now. I know. Anyway, and you never know. Uh, you don't really know how much you're missing getting together with people until you're deprived of it for a while. Yeah. A year of pandemic. You're actually able to get together with people, and you're actually able to hug somebody. Oh, yes. I know. It's yeah. wonderful. Especially if they're female. It's nice, really. Oh, anyhow. Yeah. So, <laughs> I want to know what first got you into music. And, and what I mean by that is, when did, uh, when did you hear that whisper in your ear that drew you into something that uh, would change your life? Well, I guess I was about uh, six or seven years old. There was a guy who was playing ukulele, and uh, I noticed he was going up and down the street, and uh, people were giving him nickels and dimes for playing tunes on the ukulele, and that, that kind of gave me an idea. And I thought, well, uh, let me get to work on ukulele. So I worked really hard on it. I actually got, you know, way better than he was. But uh, does surprise my... me. Now, now, Ted, where was this at? This was in Jackson, Mississippi. It would have been like 1949, 1950. Okay. And so I started out on the ukulele, and I just I went all over the neck on that. Uh, trying out different chords just to see what they sounded like. And if I liked the sound of the chord, then I would look for a song that I could fit the song into so I would use it and not, not forget the chord. Because if you just got a chord hanging out there, you're going to forget it sooner or later. But if you're using it, you're not going to forget it and you're going to keep hearing that sound in your head and you'll come to a place in a song where you go, I need that particular sound that's in that particular, blah, blah, blah. oh yeah, it's this chord here. 
And then you try about six chords <laughs> until you find Yeah, and you finally find the one you're looking for. And then from there, I started playing guitar, and I had a whole lot of trouble with those two extra strings, because, you know, you could only got four, and this had the two bass strings, which also, incidentally, hurt my fingers. So I was trying to figure out a way, and I did all kinds of crazy things. I used to take uh, model airplane cement and put it all over the ends of the fingers of my left hand and let it dry good and then try to play guitar that way. And that worked fairly well, but... Uh, you probably didn't uh, know if it worked well or not after you got ingested the fumes. <laughs> <laughs> Airplane glue, that was number one choice back in the day. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was one of the big sniffers. I know, right? <laughs> didn't last... I understand how that would have worked, though, for you. Oh, yeah. And uh, then the, I think maybe the biggest change in my life... Uh, at that point was uh, one of my aunts came by who could play, if it had strings on it, she could play it. I mean, she could play cello, she could play violin, she could play banjo, she could play mandolin, she could play guitar, she could play bass. And what she did, and uh, I don't know if she ever was aware that she did it, I was never able to thank her because she died not too long after but I was able to contact her daughter and tell her daughter that her mother had really gotten me started with guitar and that I had really appreciated it. But uh, what she did in about 30 minutes was convince me that I was going to be able to learn how to play. And I was gone after that because uh, I was going, well, Aunt Pansy, that, that actually was her name, Aunt Pansy, uh, was able to convince me that, you know, if you keep working at it, you're going to be able to learn how to play. Just don't ever give up. Sometimes so, that's all you need. That's all I needed. And then, of course, that feeling never went away. You know, like I'm working on something, I can't get it, and I'll go, well, I'll get it worked out. It might not be today, but it might be tomorrow. It might be the next day, but I'll get it worked out. You know, that, that feeling you talk about, and I think you can relate where some other guitarists would say uh, that uh, that feeling is a blessing to have it, that it, it, it really enhances your life. But at the same time, it's a curse when you can't get what you need out of it. Yes. Yes, it's a blessing because you enjoy it so much. Right. And it's a curse because you got to work to keep it going. That's right. Right. But then music is kind of that way. It's it's both a blessing and a curse. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'll, I'll take it because of the blessing. I'll put up with the curse. The blessing yeah. makes it so yeah. much worth, yeah. worth dealing with the curse. Yeah. So now now you're a songwriter. Uh, you've written many yeah. wonderful songs. And uh, uh, how would you describe the music that you typically create? I mean, what are your themes? Uh, is it people, romance, war, hate? I sort of just pick up on what's going around, going on around me. I wrote an entire song about getting up in the morning, going for a walk, and uh, crying because everything was so beautiful as I was out for the walk. And then uh, I wrote another song about uh, being away from home and having the blues from my hometown. And... Uh, then I'm still working on one about, uh, it's, it's a long story song about uh, a guy who was traveling away from New Orleans because uh, he'd lost his wife and kid in an automobile accident. Mm. And he stops at this little cafe that's out of the way. You know, it, it uh, the sign was all beat up and he knew it was not on the main road, but he thought, you know, that's probably a neat place. so. He stopped there, got out, and ended up finding out that the lady that ran the cafe had had a very similar experience and had lost her husband. And so the whole story is about how they got together and how he took the money that he had, bought into the restaurant, 
and they were uh, they were feeding people and entertaining them. So that's one that I'm working on, and I think it's not any more important than any of the other songs, but it is an important song. Well, you know, I, I've heard other people say that uh, it's an expression of emotion. It's uh, sometimes a cathartic experience. It's uh, um, you got a chip on your shoulder, and you just got to find yeah. a way to knock it off. You know. Well, I wrote that one. I had started it earlier, but I wrote it not too long after Joel died, and uh, uh, it was a real sustaining factor for me because I realized, you know, Joel died, but I still have a lot to give, and he would not want me to waste that. Of course, absolutely. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, I can almost hear him saying that. Dad, you know, don't, don't waste away and don't waste your talents just because I'm not there. Because uh, what do you know? I might be there. I might be there listening to you. You can't tell. You don't know that. And his uh, life is precious and, and it's meant to be lived. And, and you really do that. And, and, I, and I must say, after your loss, um, how you were able to regroup and uh, get back out there with your friends and start picking and grinning and all that. And it's uh, yeah. knowing your knowing your secret pain at the same time, you know, but yeah. how you were able to. It's return. inspirational. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So, and if it's all right with you, we're just going to put a little public service announcement at the end about uh, uh, suicide. Uh, just uh, if there's people out there who need help, let the yeah. number to call, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, if if people were to call me and need to talk, I'll talk to them. And uh, you know, you know, I'll even buy them a cup of coffee or whatever and talk because uh, you know, I've been there, done that, been through a whole lot of it, uh, leveled off a great deal. Uh, one thing I can say for sure is don't expect the pain to go away because it's not going to do it. So who would you say some of your musical influences are? My first influence, believe it or not, was Tex Ritter. Oh, I can see that. And uh, I, I like part of it was the fact that he used a whole lot of bass runs with his guitar playing. And I was listen, I would listen to the bass runs and figure them out and incorporate them into my playing. And then that sort of began to drive the rest of my playing because then I got to where I couldn't play a song that didn't have bass runs in it, or, or at least a one or two run or something. Uh, and I got to where I just... I got to where I loved bass and even learned how to play bass because because I like it so much. Sure. And uh, then uh, I started out with uh, blues because that's what was happening in Mississippi. This was the early 60s. Right. And uh, in fact, a friend of mine and I went on sort of a field trip up through the Mississippi Delta and he actually found two or three guys, two or three of the older guys that were still alive mm -hmm. and still playing. Wow. And there's a funny story about one of them. We went to see him and we were playing. And of course, we had to sit down and eat supper with him because that was hospitality and it had to be done. And uh, afterwards, he said, you didn't bring nary little nip, did you? And I said, uh, you mean uh, whiskey? And he said, yeah. And I said, but you told me you were a preacher. And he said, I is on Sunday mornings, but this is Saturday night. So I don't know if we should get into the story about the night that Jan drank you under the table. <laughs> <laughs> or so you thought. <laughs> so why don't you play something for us? Okay. Just happened to have a guitar right here. Oh, sure. It's funny how that works. <laughs>
had me breathing I wasn't worth your time Now your phone call won't even be worth your dime I hope you're happy now Doesn't matter anyhow She walked in and you walked out on me again Now you thought you had me when you walked out the door Cause I've always cried and begged you back before Someone else has filled your shoes Loved the way my blues She walked in when you walked out on me again She walked in when you walked out That's what it's all about there's no reason for regret that I can see I hope you're happy now It doesn't matter anyhow She walked in and you walked out on me again You see your leaving did not bring me in line I'm so glad that you're no longer mine No more lonely nights Cause you're here to hold me tight She walks in and you walked out on me again She walked in when you walked out That's what it's all about there's no reason for regret that I can see I hope you're happy now It doesn't matter anyhow She walked in and you walked out on me again Yes, she walked in and you walked out on me again Uh, the, what the chorus she walked in when you walked out on me again okay that's what happened was uh she kept walking out th in terms of uh metaphorically threatening to leave and i finally said bye yeah. <laughs> by the time i get to phoenix <laughs> go ahead uh you can tell it's an older song it was written in the uh early 70s you can tell it's an older song because your phone call doesn't cost a dime anymore oh well yeah that's true <laughs> so we touched a little bit on your um on your work doing um playing in senior centers and memory units tell us about your career as a music therapist yes uh that was uh that was about 25 years worth i started in 1994 i started with the music therapy stuff and i got into it because we were with uh, Canadian University Services overseas, who, of course, by then were taking older people than, than just college students. And I got assigned to the music unit because they needed somebody to teach guitar. Uh, they had 81 small schools on the island. This was St. Vincent in the uh, Caribbean. They had 81 small schools on the island but uh, they had pianos and the pianos were all out of tune and people would uh, get a little ignorant and leave them out in the rain, which of course didn't do them any good. So they decided to use guitar because uh, guitars were cheaper to buy for one thing. And uh, so I ended up being the guitar man in St. Vincent. And then there was one point where they did. Uh, they they had a campaign to preserve the national bird, which is uh, a parrot, Saint Vincent parrot, and they had me and my choir at uh, the uh, junior high school record the song, and then they had uh, uh, elementary school students do a little dance to it in costumes and stuff like that. 
and it got about 30 seconds to a minute airplay on uh, national on international tv oh my god and uh after that uh very few discipline problems with the kids you know i'll stick with mr jowden man he got us on tv <laughs> and it was the rusty and jan show is potentially an international tv show we have <laughs> gone to we have gone to ireland at least we had a guest all the way from ireland for st patrick's day <laughs> yes wow that's <laughs> cool yeah. that so was you, one of the earlier episodes so you never know you could be in china tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I got to brush up on my Chinese real quick, too. <laughs> but, you know, let me ask you a question. Now. We uh, we were talking to John Warnega, um, an arranger from uh, the area uh, for Fralinger, and uh, he's a music teacher. And we were talking about the fact that he sometimes goes to the study team or whatever it is and says, this child cannot read music. And I think that he needs some remedial attention and they would say oh no 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 he's he's fine he's all going to outgrow it and all and uh and i wonder yourself as a as a clinician who is, provides an assessment of patients do you have difficulty getting people to listen to you when you say you got a problem here if uh there's two or three things that i do one is if a kid's having a problem singing in key uh, I will put him next to somebody who is a very good singer and in key, and I'll just say, listen to this person and follow along with them. Yeah. And be careful never to say, you can't sing in key, because it'll stay that, if, I, if I say that, it'll stay that way. And uh, as far as reading music, I'll leave that up to the person. It's like if they want to learn how to read music and it's important to them to do that, I'm there and we'll do it. Uh, but if they go, I just want to learn some songs and I just want to learn some chords and some bass moves and stuff like that, then that's what we'll do. Because uh, I feel like if, if, if I put the student in a position where they're comfortable telling me what they want to do, and where they want to go, then uh, I can sit back and be a roadmap. Yeah, okay, definitely. you want to go from here to here. All right. Well, I'll show you how to do that. Yeah. Well, even as a clinician, um, when you when you meet a patient, you kind of somewhere in your assessment want to say, okay, what are your goals? Where do you want to go with this? Yeah, because if if we're going, if we're both going and where they want to go. I can take motivation out of the mix altogether because the motivation is there, particularly if I've gotten them to believe they'll be able to do it. Sure, sure. Well, what kind of advice would you um, would you give? Uh, you, all right, well, let's just take it like this. You, you got a six-year-old or, or even a 10-year-old, whatever, um, and they, they hear that voice and they want to pursue it and, uh, um, uh, and they're on their way, uh, but they're confused. What would you tell them? Yeah. Well, if they are, if they're Christian or church oriented, mm -hmm. I suggest that they sing in the choirs. That's a good piece of advice. I've been there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, we both kind of started out that way. We really did, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that I'll do is if it looks like they're getting good at it and really enjoying it, I'll suggest voice lessons because uh, part of voice lessons that uh, that uh, until you're actually taking the lessons that doesn't get known is that if it's a good teacher, the teacher will teach you how to take care of your voice so that you have you have a voice to sing as long as you want it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's all about breathing and uh it's all about doing vocal exercises as often as possible like at least once a day i'm not so good at that you know there's <laughs> days I, there's days i do it by singing by the way becky and i have started singing together again that's my wow. wife she's a wonderful harmonizer yeah that's yeah a good move. and uh i can get the guitar stuff going and i can get the get the keys set but i forget that 
She doesn't. She'll go, as I remember, you had the capo on the second fret and you were playing C chords. Yep, sound familiar, honey? Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if I do, but it's uh, one of the things that we hadn't thought about that, you know, duh, is it's brought us a lot closer together. Sure. Oh. And, uh, How could it not? Yeah. And by the way, it's I'm I'm remembering it's not 44 years that we've been together. It's 48. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not even going to comment. I'm just going to say that seems like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it is a long time. But... It is a long time. I give you a congratulations. That's that's great. But you We're... know. I... I, I did want to touch a little bit more on the on the, the music therapy aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think people realize what you do in that regard, uh, with regard to seniors and 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 and, and just before you respond, sure. everybody has seen that YouTube video where they put the iPod on the guy's uh, ears who's been catatonic, you know, and then all of a sudden he responds to rhythm and blues. Now. Some people would say that that's amazing. That's a, that that you were able to turn a switch on like that. And then other people, perhaps musicians like you and I, would say, "Of course, he responded. That's what he listened to when he was young." And, and I'll take that a f step further, Ted. Didn't you tell me a story where you j not like maybe about a year or two ago, where you had a a patient in in a senior facility where you you were working with him and you had some major breakthrough or something with him? where he wasn't really, he was kind of like a grumpy guy or something like that. I forget what the story was, but. I think that that was one uh, where he was, he was uh, not feeling well that morning. And also a guy comes in with a guitar and he goes, oh, freaking folk singer. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, I didn't say anything about it. And uh, I just started playing songs that I thought would connect with him because uh, connecting with people is, is, is the important thing. In fact, uh, uh, Michael London and I agree really strongly on this, that it's the connections with people that are important. Anyway, uh, I started singing songs that he, that he recognized and I could see his affect was gradually getting more positive and and getting more getting brighter and you know by the end of the session you know he was a happy guy instead of the grumpy guy at the beginning of the session yeah. and you know just to add to that as well I, I mean i understand you know i um i uh throughout my nursing career i always utilized music wherever i could you know wherever i was at a facility and so so i just feel like i took the good part of my nursing career and put away the bad but and then, yeah. Nevertheless, um, it's important for people to recognize that what we do is not just playing for seniors. We're playing for the brain injured. We're playing for the yeah. disabled. We're playing for the young spinal cord person who had a car accident. You know, so so it's not just about being able to play for that stereotypical uh, facility patients. It's about playing for everybody. Yeah. So I have a little sheet that I that I have written up that that tells what music does for the elderly. And I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah we would too. One, yeah, of the, we do. one of the things, well, I have copies of it, so I'll, I'll see that you get one. You may have to uh, give me a little boot in the rear to remind okay. me to do it. But... Oh, Jane's good at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last week we played at a, at a facility where they, you know, they can't mix the communities and they have a lot of different ones. So that she had us playing for four to four different communities in one day and just from one community to another every need was different and every yeah. they all liked different types of music some of them like the older stuff some of them yeah. like the newer stuff so as a matter of fact we got to the last unit that we played and right in the front row there was this guy with a beard he was in a wheelchair and he had a t-shirt that said moody blues yep <laughs> <laughs> Justin Hayworth. So, so we brought out our night in white satin, and he was the happiest guy in the world. Yep. <laughs> really they were was. that last that last group. They we were much hipper. They were yeah, definitely right. they were a little bit younger, and they liked a lot more, you know, yeah. more current stuff. So, so you got to be on your toes. <laughs> Somebody had a T-shirt on the other day that said, uh, 
uh, I love coffee and maybe three people. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably true, too. Yeah, but we know that's not you. <laughs> no, it was somebody in a facility. Oh, yeah. oh well, I, I have to tell you my classic facility uh, uh, story. I'm uh, walking past the, the nurse's desk, and there's a, a little lady there. I was doing an assessment, and uh, she's all crippled over, and she's in her wheelchair, and she's got her head over her side from osteoporosis. And I just make a joke um, because it's filled with women, and there's only a few men. So I said to her, I said, uh, what, did you, what did you do with all the men? And she looked up at me, and she said, we ate them. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, oh, I better watch out. She said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you, you don't sell these people short. You just don't. No, you don't. Yeah. No, some of the uh, some of their minds are quicker than mine. How about that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Some of their minds are quicker than mine, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So what advice would you give a musician who's just starting out? I would say start listening a lot and listen for songs that, that you resonate with, that make you feel good or that, that you feel like you might be able to play and would enjoy playing. Start working on those. And if you need help working on them, get a really good teacher or get one of the videos. There's some great guitar videos out now. And... Uh, uh, work on it and at some point there's going to be this little if if music is your thing at some point there's going to be some little ping that goes keep going don't give up keep going and uh, that one phrase don't give up keep going has kept me going if I, if I had to say one thing that's kept me going other than I like to be up on stage and be recognized, but who doesn't? You know? <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? Like we all do. Yeah. We'd be uh, lying if we didn't say that was part of it. But uh, it's the motivation that keeps you going. And also something that I think gets forgotten about music, because uh, it's kind of under the radar, is curiosity. Curiosity as as to if I tried this, I wonder what would happen. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times, when you do try that, something does happen. And many times, it's something you did not expect to happen, but you happen to like it. And uh, then that goes in your repertoire and goes into your guitar style. You know, it, it's interesting you say that because throughout the years I've, I've had people say, oh, how do I play guitar? Give me some advice for playing guitar. Um, and, and I used to say, well, start with this chord and that chord and learn this key. And then once you learn that, you add chords and so on and so forth. But lately I've been saying, just do it. Just play it. Go exploring. Look what's yeah. the neck. See what you hear. See what feels right. You know, and it, yeah. it's, and I know other people have learned that way. Yeah. But they, listen they for what might come next. Yeah. Listen for what might come next. So why don't you play another original song for us? That would be great. <laughs> It's sad, 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 tearful too Tell you what I'm gonna do Gonna leave, leave, leave you cause I'm through Your two-time living is just a lie And I'm too tired to wonder why I can't put up with you So I'll have to put you down 
I just don't want you hanging around Paint me a picture of the blues Sad, 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 tearful too Tell you what I'm gonna do Gonna leave, leave, leave you cause I'm through This is one time you won't take me in I won't ever be number two again Because I'm three times seven And I know just what to do I'm gonna leave, leave, leave you cause I'm through Paint me a picture of the blues Make it sad, 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 tearful too Tell you what I'm gonna do Gonna leave you cause I'm through Tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave, leave, leave you cause I'm through I got almost all the guitar notes on that one. I know, I noticed that. <laughs> so before we let you go, Ted, is there a website or if somebody wanted to buy your music, how would they? And if I'm not mistaken, you have some uh, recordings in vinyl as well. Yep. Yeah, I have a vinyl recording that's ancient. It was made in uh, 1977. I'm sure it's wonderful. Now, now I take a little offense to that. Night, ancient 1977. Excuse me, I was five. <laughs> that make me now. <laughs> she loves doing that. She just does. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So you you had a website? Uh, yes, I have a website, MississippiTed.com, and uh, at the beginning of it, it has this uh, sign as you're in, and it's a it's a photo of a sign as you're entering Jackson, Mississippi, which is where I was born, uh, and it says Mississippi. Home of the blues. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's right. yeah, arguably true, but uh, yeah. Yeah. still, uh, yeah. still a, a good thing to have at the beginning of a website. Yeah. And this yeah. afternoon, I will be back again working on the website because I will be uh, recording some original songs to be set off to be copyrighted nice. so that I can include them perhaps in another album because I've got about four or five other songs written and uh, probably if I decided I need three more songs for an album I probably would be able to come up with three yeah yeah it'll take me a little while but I could probably do it and uh, then I'll have uh, I'll be doing some teaching I'll be doing some music therapy work because I will have my uh, licensed professional counselor out, uh, uh, li uh, license, and uh, I'll be doing some. Uh, I'll be doing probably some Zoom teaching. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully people will uh, be comfortable enough for me to come to their homes because I would rather. It's just much yeah. better when you're right across from the person. Yeah. You can say. Zoom lessons are hard take that little finger and get it off of that string and put it on the string right next to it and it's going to sound yep. a whole lot better you know, yeah, yeah than trying to do it on zoom i think uh um i have uh i wish i had uh, had more technique when i first started playing by it i wish there was someone showing me oh no you don't want to hold it like that you want to do it like this yeah you know? so yeah. would have made things different but... use what you're trying to do to get the technique like there's there's something you hear, something you want to play, start trying to play it, doesn't work. Look at the neck of the guitar and see what kind of fingering might be the easiest fingering to get that little part. It's a hard thing to do, but boy, when you get it down, it's like you don't have to worry about that part of the song anymore. Your fingers just automatically go there. So many little things with guitar. No great big monster, huge one thing, but so many little things that all need to be there to get Guess it. What? It's not it's not all that different on flute, really. Sometimes it's about lifting a finger. Yeah. When something seems hard, I tell my students, you know, to go from there to there, it's one finger. It's not it's not a difficult thing, really. Yeah. And when you think of it that way, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like you say, you just keep going. 
And yeah. If, if you go there and you keep going, then you'll get there. Yep. And that's the story of life also. Yep. Absolutely. So much life on. lessons you can learn from music. Yeah. Well, Ted, thank you so much for coming on our show. Yes. And, and thank, thank you for, for me. Thank you for, uh, for, for being such an excellent mentor to me. You've been uh, so helpful in my guitar playing and, and well, thank uh, you. as a friend, you know, no question about that. We just love you. You do. Hey, thank you. Love both of you guys too. Aww. All right. Good yeah. All right, Ted. Thanks. Well, we hope you enjoyed episode 19 of the Rusty and Jan show. I can't believe we've made it this far. <laughs> and we hope we have dispensed a maximum dosage of enjoyment and musical medicine. We all know music heals, and that is something we can use more of right now. Yes. So let's spread it around. We'd like to end with a song that seems to be enjoyed by one of many ages and a real favorite in some of our facilities. Here is Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue by Ray Henderson and Sam Lewis. Has anybody seen my gal? Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue, oh what those tight feet can do. Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned down hose, flapper, yes sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run into Five foot two all covered up with fur. Diamond rings, all those things that your outfit was in her. Well, could she coo, could she coo, could she, could she, could she coo? Has anybody seen my gal? Five foot two, eyes of blue. Oh, what those five feet can do. Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned out hose, flapper. Yes, sir, one of those. Has anybody seen my gal? Now you run into that five foot two, all covered up with fur. Diamond rings, all those things. That your life it was in her. Well, could she coo, could she woo, could she, could she, could she coo? Has anybody seen my gal? Has anybody seen my gal? Has anybody seen my gal? <laughs> <laughs>